Hello, this is Independent Media from Canada. My name is Jack Etkin. This is the Weekly News. Our first story is about how the wonderful cannabis plant is finally coming back into our lives, followed by a report that the government of the United States is funding ISIS. And we'll finish with stories on GMOs and a huge and ongoing oil spill in Alberta. We hope cannabis will be legal in Canada soon. Here is our cannabis correspondent, Will Smith. Jack, I'm sure that many of our viewers will be interested to hear that the war on cannabis, which seemed to be at a standstill for many years, is firing up in a different way now. As you know, the casualties were only on the plant side. Billions and billions of plants, in fact, Yes, many humans were killing each other too, but to be fair, they always seem to be doing that on this planet. None were dying from the plant directly. And some think that if cannabis does win the war, fewer humans will die in the long run anyway. Now that both Canada and Mexico have legalized medical cannabis, former President Vicente Fox announced Tuesday at a marijuana business conference in Oakland that his nation and Canada intend to take the lead in the huge market for medical and recreational cannabis exports. Fox told attendees at the National Cannabis Industry Association's convention that Mexico could one day produce 60% of the legal marijuana Americans consume. The U.S. government's official position is that the plant has no medicinal value. This strategy, one of getting people to chill out instead of killing each other, could have long-term ramifications for the war culture, and thus the entire planet. As Canada continues to supply cannabis for countries such as Chile, Germany, and the U.S., we will keep you updated on new developments. And remember, Canada is only a few letters away from being completely green. It certainly seems possible that the people who run the United States have been funding ISIS from the very beginning, which means the United States is behind the ISIS terror campaign in the Middle East, Europe, and here in North America. If you Google U.S. funds ISIS, you'll see a lot of stories from serious people saying that, in fact, the United States is funding ISIS, and a lot of other terror groups as well. And our question is, why are Canada's political and media leaders not telling us what's going on? Why is this story being kept secret? For example, here is U.S. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard's Stop Arming Terrorists Act has been introduced into the U.S. Senate by Senator Rand Paul. The legislation would prohibit any U.S. federal agency from using taxpayer dollars to provide weapons, cash, intelligence, or any support to terrorist groups, which many people believe is exactly what the U.S. government has been doing. Allowed American taxpayer dollars to fund terror groups such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS in Syria. Are you, you really suggesting that the U.S. government is funding these terrorist groups? Uh, I'm not only suggesting it, this is, this is the reality that we're, we're living in. And not directly, mo Most though. Americans, you know, if, if you or I were to go and provide money uh, weapons or support or whatever to a group like al-Qaeda or ISIS, we would immediately be thrown in jail. Uh, however, the U.S. government has been providing money, weapons, intel assistance and other types of support through the CIA directly to these groups that are working with uh, and are affiliated with al-Qaeda and ISIS. So, we had a bill in the United States Senate to stop the United States from funding terror groups but Canada's media will not tell us about this. We also have the Canadian website globalresearch.ca saying basically the same thing. Global Research says ISIS is a product made in the USA, uh, run and funded by the United States, an instrument of terror designed to divide and conquer the oil-rich Middle East. Global Research is run by Michelle Chosodovsky, Professor Chosodovsky is an award-winning author, professor of economics emeritus at the University of Ottawa, and founder of the Center for Research on Globalization. So can we ask why the Canadian media and our political parties will not tell Canadians that the U.S. may be funding ISIS? Now, we are not saying that the United States is funding ISIS, because maybe they aren't. 
but certainly there's enough evidence for our media and politicians to at least ask the question. Bill C-51 was brought in to protect us from ISIS, and Bill C-51 is a threat to our democratic rights. But we need Bill C-51, we are told, to protect us from ISIS. But if the United States is funding ISIS, then what is Bill C-51 really all about? And on June 23rd of this year, we found out that Mr. Trudeau, not surprisingly, thinks very much like Mr. Harper on Bill C-51. Now back in Canada, Canadians are soon going to be eating the first ever genetically modified animal approved for human consumption. In this case, it's the GMO salmon. Here's Ed Johnson with the story. Prince Edward Island has just approved a first in world history, and Canada is unfortunately leading the way in the wrong direction. The government of PEI is allowing the first ever genetically modified salmon factory to be built in that province. In May of 2016, the Trudeau government approved, largely in secret, the sale of GMO salmon in Canada. This salmon is the first ever GMO animal to be sold for human consumption. Aquabounty, the corporation that holds the patents on this salmon, assures us that it is completely safe for your family to eat, and Mr. Tudeau agrees. This photo, provided by Aquabounty Technologies, shows two same-age salmon, a GMO salmon in back and a normal salmon in front. But they tell us it's safe. Here's Will Smith again on something that's happening in Alberta. Thanks, Jack. There are about 450,000 oil and gas wells in Alberta. Thousands are old and have been abandoned by their corporate owners. These wells are now leaking oil and gas and polluting the air, the land, and the water. Besides the 450,000 wells, there are about 400,000 kilometers of pipeline in Alberta and thousands of buildings housing all kinds of processing equipment. All of this poisonous material will have to be dealt with in the future. The oil industry has no real plan to clean this up, and really it cannot be cleaned up. But we Canadians will have to spend hundreds of billions of dollars to try. California has just declared that Monsanto's widely used pesticide Roundup can cause cancer and birth defects, among other things. Good for California, but maybe we should do something here in Canada where Roundup is widely used. Ed Johnson has the story. Now here is a scene that many of you may be familiar with if you have traveled along the farmlands of Lower Vancouver or indeed anywhere where non-organic farming methods are practiced. In early spring, fields like this one behind me are doused with Roundup to kill all living plants on the land. You'll notice that the spray also becomes airborne, traveling many kilometers depending on the wind, even though there are voluntary guidelines for spraying, but hey, who's checking? There is no government agency that is monitoring this, and so it's really up to the farmers to uh, apply the uh, common sense for spraying. In, in about two weeks, the field turns yellow, which is a common sight throughout the area. So what, you say? The farmers doing this claim there is no other way, and in future episodes will show there is another way. However, recent evidence points to the harm that Roundup and other herbicides are doing to our health and those of animals and aquatic life. This Scientific American article in 2009 sounded the alarm for Roundup, the top-selling weed killer around the world then and still is. In 2015, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer classified glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, as probably carcinogenic in humans. In the early part of the century, I remember calling up the Canadian Food Inspection Agency about the use of Roundup in a field next to my home and was told not to worry. The stuff is biodegradable and disappears in the soil. This quote advice unquote came straight from the producer Monsanto's advertisements. Monsanto was convicted of false advertising in France in 2007 for this statement and lost all of its appeals right up to the French Supreme Court. 
Tests have shown that most Americans have glyphosate in their urine at levels likely to cause endocrine disruptions. According to the International Endocrine Society, this can lead to obesity, reduced fertility, prostate cancer, thyroid diseases, and hyperactive behavior, just to name a few. Because Roundup is proving less effective over time, now the industry's answer is to use more of Roundup and some new ones, such as neonicotinoids, which is known to kill bees. In the meantime, the sales of certified organic products are gaining ground every year as consumers realize that poisons in our foods are not safe at any level. This is something for the traditional industrial farmers in our area to seriously consider for their health, for our health, and for the health of the planet. Thanks, Ed. And we'll just finish off with a few stories Canadians should be keeping their eye on, even though there's very little information about these stories in our corporate media. First, ongoing record bank profits as the big banks continue to take everyone's money. Second, Justin Trudeau's plan for an infrastructure bank is moving ahead very rapidly. The infrastructure bank is going to help corporate Canada privatize our public infrastructure, including roads, bridges, public transit, water, electricity, etc. in the future. Uh, Mr. Trudeau plans to have the bank up and running by the end of 2017, so we can see how quickly the government can move when it wants to help corporate Canada. And finally, the huge amount of debt in Canada just as the government begins to raise interest rates. That should be interesting. They seem to have us right where they want us. Record bank profits, more privatization, and record debt for the rest of us. That's the corporate plan for Canadians and for our country. Let's hope we can do better than that. Thanks for watching. See you next week. This is Jack Etkin for Canadian Independent Media. Thank you.